Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Trish, physician, best-selling author, and the Health Catalyst speaker. Welcome to Discover Health Podcast. Today, I'm really excited. We're going to be talking about men's high-performance health with Dr. Tracy Gappin. Tracy, Dr. Tracy, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thanks for having me today, Dr. Trish. This is great. You're down in Florida and um, doing, it sounds like from what I've been reading, enormous things for men's health and their performance. So let's go take a moment. And folks, I'm going to read Dr. Tracy Gappin's bio here, and then we'll get right into it. So Dr. Gappin is board certified with the American Board of Urology and is a fellow of the American College of Surgeons. After his undergraduate education at Texas A&M University, and medical school training at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical School, he completed a general surgery internship and urology residency at the University of Florida. Dr. Gappin combines his compassion and extensive experience with men's healthcare and cutting edge technology to offer patients individualized, state-of-the-art care. He has been a true pioneer for innovation throughout his medical career. In 2006, Dr. Gappin was the first urologist in Sarasota, Florida to perform robotic surgery. In 2013, Dr. Gappin was the first urologist in Sarasota, Florida to perform MRI-guided target fusion biopsy for prostate cancer detection, which has since become the standard of care. In 2013, he was the first board-certified urologist in Sarasota to perform high intensity focused ultrasound for minimally invasive treatment of men with prostate, prostate cancer. High intensity focused ultrasound has since been FDA approved for use in the United States and has become widely recognized and utilized as a safe, effective treatment option for prostate cancer with minimal treatment related side effects compared to traditional options. Dr. Gappin founded Sarasota Prostate Care in 2014 in order to be able to provide MRI-guided target fusion biopsy and high-intensity focused ultrasound for men with prostate cancer. In 2017, Dr. Gappin founded Smart Men's Health, focused on optimizing male performance. He offers a personalized path to helping men maximize sexual health, testosterone levels, and prostate health. He currently resides, of course, in Sarasota, Florida, and he lives with his wife and his two children. So that's quite a bio there, Dr. Gappin. That's awesome. Wow. I, I'm not sure where you got that from, but that's quite impressive, uh, lengthy bio. Tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Yeah. Sure. Well, if those people in on what's going on. So, and the other thing is the first question I love to have folks elaborate on is telling people more about your story. How have you come to being of service the way you are now? Yeah, sure. Great question. So um, uh, as my lengthy uh, bio uh, that you provided uh, details, I have a, a long career in urology uh, as a board certified urologist. I spent really over 20 years now um, focused on optimizing men's health. And it was really my own health challenges that really changed my perspective and transformed my life, but also my career it was about eight years ago now where I had uh, a number of really significant health issues. And um, it was my wife who finally nagged me enough, if you will, to go see a doctor myself because I um, was not the same guy I used to be. I was irritable. I was uh, somewhat depressed. I was massively overweight at the time wasn't sleeping well, eating like crap, not exercising, really trashing my body. Um, I was on call as a urologist on call commonly at the hospital overnight and not, uh, not really sleeping. And, you know, I had really neglected my own health and I went to see a doctor myself for the first time. And this incredibly vulnerable experience was eye opening for me when I realized that my internal medicine doc, that I had gone to see really didn't have an answer for me. You know, if you're sick, if you have a disease, if you have symptoms, we're taught through our medical education, how to fix that, whether it's a pharmaceutical, whether it's a surgery, whatever it may be to fix that specific disease, that crisis, you know, it is crisis care, but there was nothing to really help me turn around my health. 
and help me sleep better, help me learn how to eat better, help me learn how to deal with my stress, how to learn how to clear toxins, learn how to deal with all these aspects of my health that I now recognize are so incredibly important. And so that got me on this journey to understand um, how do I get healthy? What do I do? And, and I realized that, that, you know, as a men's health expert myself back then, I didn't have the answers either because we're not taught that we're not given those tools in our medical education. And so I went down this, this journey, this path, this quest, if you will, of learning about epigenetics. And I went through epigenetic certification programs and I went through hormone optimization courses and I learned functional medicine and I learned about peptide therapy and I learned about cutting edge uh, age management strategies that we now know that we can actually reverse the aging process. It's, it's, it's a fascinating time in history of, of medicine and healthcare right now. And so I was able to really uh, pivot and transform my own health. And I started implementing these strategies with my patients. And I realized that I was onto something here when these men were experiencing these radical uh, changes and, and upgrades to their health. And that got me to really to where I am now. And, and my passion and my mission is really helping men be the husbands, the fathers, the leaders that they're meant to be. That's awesome. You know, I love that as my first question because, and I love hearing the stories because every single one of us, it seems that now out there in functional medicine or holistic medicine or these other approaches are exactly as you've described. We've gone through our training and then we got sick because of all the things we've had to do. And, and it's like, but they don't, we don't have any answers. And we say to ourselves, well, wait a minute, they train, I'm trained as a doctor. I should know the answer. And we don't, which sends us back learning some more. Because obviously, right. to go through all that, everything we've been through, we don't mind learning things. <laughs> we just That's need to right. keep looking for answers. So what does it mean, Dr. Gappin, to biohack male sexual performance then? Yeah, so the, you know the term biohack it has been um, a, a very popular phrase over the last, let's say, you know, five ten years now, um, and that just really means what tricks, if you will, what strategies can you use to upgrade your human operating system, if you will, to upgrade your performance? And uh, some of them are legitimate, which we'll talk about. Some of them are a little hocus pocus. Um, there are, you know, when we look at things like peptide therapy, which I love and we could talk about later on, um, these strategies are, are specifically aimed at um, taking a very unique personalized approach to health and improving cellular efficiency, whether it's, you know, reducing inflammation or optimizing immune function or whatever it may be. So, you know, these are all biohacks, ways of improving the way our body functions. And so when we look at cellular, uh, excuse me, sexual function, you know, what's interesting is a lot of men will really defer seeing a doctor for the longest time. And, and, and I, I was guilty of this myself, um, mm -hmm. but a lot of men will not come to see me until they start having sexual function issues. And that is suddenly a wake up call that, damn, I got to get in and see a doc, see what's going on here. And, and a lot of times they'll come in for the blue pill. They're asking for the blue pill. That's what they think the answer is. And, and that's when I really, you know, put the brakes on and, 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 and describe my systems approach to health, a data driven perspective and um, how we can take a very uh, precision based approach uh, understanding, you know, animal and medicine, everyone is unique and different and we got to take a different approach for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. But coming full circle, when we come to sexual health, biohacks that we can use that, that I know work for most men are these regenerative strategies and tools that we have to stimulate repair and recovery of uh, sexual function. And so things like Gaines Wave, which is a shockwave uh, treatment, or PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma injection, or, or even things like stem cells and exosomes. These are all approaches that we can use to stimulate regeneration and recovery of normal cellular function and normal blood flow to the penis, which is ultimately what uh, is needed for normal healthy erections. And so that's really my approach. You know, my, my biohack is there's no magic we're going to look at how do we optimize cellular function? How do we improve and repair the damage that you've done to yourself over many years of your life? Mm, and that's so true. I mean, these biohack concepts, exactly. They've been out there and they were brought up with the technology world and so forth. And it's stuck for a lot of people. 
Um, but, you know, there, what you've done to yourself, you mentioned, and the idea is, you know, let's talk about foundational things in functional medicine, like, you know, the health issues that are most likely to lead men down the path of ED, erectile dysfunction. Yeah. What are those? So that yeah. men can hear that. Absolutely. So I, I would tell you that there's probably three pain points that I hear on a daily basis from the high performing men that I work with executives, entrepreneurs, retired athletes, professionals, lawyers, wealth advisors, you know, whoever it's energy and fatigue. I can't focus. Um, I I'm tired throughout the day. I just want to take a nap. I'm, I'm, I'm dead halfway through the afternoon. Number two, I can't lose weight. I got this belly and I'm 20 pounds overweight and I don't care what I try. Nothing works. I've tried all these fad diets. I've, I've tried running on a treadmill every day. I've taken these magic pills and nothing seems to help me lose weight. And the third one is I can't perform like I used to in the bedroom. And, and those are really the three consistent complaints that I find. And they're all related to really the same underlying process. And that is that, you know, we're experiencing what I call a men's health pandemic. And it's, a, it's this crisis that's not getting any attention. And that is that testosterone levels are plummeting. Worldwide, we're seeing about a 30% decline in testosterone levels over the last 20 years. And that affects sexual desire, sexual function, muscle, sure. But that also affects a lot of other very important processes. It affects metabolism it affects energy it affects insulin sensitivity it affects cognitive function and focus and mood it affects our ability to burn fat and build muscle and our ability to have um, healthy repair of of damage it helps us sleep and so you see how testosterone whereas it's often thought of as just a sex hormone it is intimately tied with every other part of the body and so this brings me back to the, the systems approach to health. So, you know, looking at it from a functional med medicine perspective, how I approach these men is yes, I love strategies like gains wave and PRP for, uh, you know, treating directly the, the, the penis to stimulate new blood flow, but it's really important that we take a, a, a systems approach to understand that that's just one part of the whole human system. And so I've created what I call the male framework and M A L E is actually an acronym that I use to uh, help kind of create structure to my focus. And so M is mindset, where I look at stress resilience and overcoming the, the detrimental effects of unmitigated stress. We can't get rid of stress, but we can certainly develop resilience and understand how to better manage it and cope with it and not let it affect us negatively. Um, I have a big focus on what is your why? And you know, for guys to have success with the rest of the male framework, you got to first understand what is your why and live with intention, understanding that, that that's your ultimate goal and everything needs to be in alignment with that goal. And so going out and, and, and having eight drinks tonight may not be in alignment with you being the best, best dad you want to be tomorrow. So it's making decisions like that on, on a regular basis. And that may be, you know, for me tonight, when I finish work at 5, 30, 6 o'clock, I'm going to hit the gym for an hour because I know that long-term it's those little incremental steps that are going to make the big difference. And I could blow it off and go home and lay on the couch and hang out with the kids, which I'll do when I, after, I, after I work out. But I know that that's a decision, a micro decision on a daily basis you got to make to live with intention toward your bigger why. And so that's the M is, is uh, mindset, stress, resilience. What is your why? Eliminating limiting beliefs that a lot of guys have that, that I can't change. I can't get over this. I'll never be able to, to be the healthy guy I, I used to be. A is aging. This is where I look at all the hormones, not just testosterone, but thyroid and cortisol and insulin and DHEA and so on. Look at cellular function. This is where I use peptide therapy to optimize cellular function. Uh, looking at ways of reducing inflammation as well. L is lifestyle, you know, the traditional nutrition, sleep and fitness that we know are so important. Um, and I, I take a very um, individualized genetics based personalized approach to each of those so that everyone is different and I treat them that way. Um, but those are so important, especially sleep, which we'll talk about, I'm sure near the end. Um, and then E is environment, uh, we're looking at gut health, looking at immune function, looking at toxins in our environment. Um, you know, the, the, the most common question I get on these podcast interviews is what's the biggest 
culprit, the biggest reason for this testosterone pandemic that we're experiencing. And it's clearly tied to endocrine disruptors or toxic chemicals in our environment that have been shown to crush testosterone. And so um, upgrading our detox systems and eliminating our exposure to these toxins are really critical as well. So that's the long answer. I'm sorry for um, for your question, uh, the MALE framework. Yeah. Discover movement will enhance your mobility, build strength, improve balance, and enable you to move with confidence and ease. To register, please visit our Discover Health online shop at members.discoverhealthfmc.com. Yeah, that's fine. It was great to hear your acronym for male and, and the fact that people get to get a sense of okay, what are you talking about with this systems approach? And, and when you talk about a systems approach, we're talking about multiple systems. You mentioned you know, the gut, you mentioned the detox system. Um, there's so many parts to it, it starts to become a long answer. It starts to become complicated. So what type of diet and lifestyle behaviors do you, would you put at the top of the list that put men at more risk for suffering from erectile dysfunction? Great question. So there are uh, there are a number of factors. If we look at you know what causes erectile dysfunction, and we can look at uh, nutrition, we can look at you know excess sugar, excess refined processed carbs in our diet. We can look at um, omega six polyunsaturated fats. These are the vegetable oils like canola oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil. Any of those oils peanut oils or vegetable oils that you see in, in especially packaged products are pro-inflammatory. These have a massive effect on our ability to burn fat and um, a massive effect on our cardiovascular system. And they cause um, insulin resistance as well. And so they promote, uh, you know, poor glucose regulation, which leads to obesity and leads to uh, vascular disease. And all of these are intimately tied to erectile function. So to give a little bit of physiology here to have an erection, you need to have blood flow to the penis and these arteries, which are providing blood flow will dilate. They'll relax to allow increased blood flow into the penis. And that increased blood flow is um, what creates the erection. Okay. That engorgement of blood, it blocks the outflow of the venous drainage. And that's what gives you an erection. Well, how does that occur? Well, you have in the lining of those arteries, you have smooth muscle and that smooth muscle has to relax to open up, to allow more blood flow to come in. Well, how does that blood, how does that blood vessel, that artery relax? It's nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is the hormone that promotes vasodilation. And what inhibits nitric oxide? Insulin resistance. And so this is why coming full circle, when you're eating like shit, excuse my language, it causes and promotes insulin resistance, which decreases nitric oxide, which means you can't get it up. And so that's the direct relationship. And, and studies have shown if you just fix your, we haven't even talked about sleep and fitness and, and detox and everything else, just nutrition alone. Studies have shown if you just fix your diet alone, it can have a statistically significant improvement in sexual function. Absolutely. I mean, men out there, you really need to be hearing this because, you know, I've had, honestly, how many times have patients heard from medical doctors or physicians, medical providers that your diet doesn't matter, you know, not from a functional medicine doc, not from those of us that have gotten ill and figured it out and said, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. And I got to learn what else I need to know to get better. And then we've right. learned it and we've gotten better. That's right. And so now we're here trying to give people the word and yeah. exactly what you're talking about is what they need to hear that it really starts with diet. Um, and then everything else starts to fall into better place. And then of course the exercise and the detox and optimizing gut health and sleep, you know, and all these different things. So once someone starts working on their overall health with these lifestyle things, and then, you know, let's say things aren't improving, but they're not really getting where the person optimally wants them to be, then, you know, how do they do this regeneration? Like what is, what are the main 
uh, techniques, main treatments that you're recommending for folks that have done the foundational stuff and now they're still having issues with their performance? Yeah. So, so when it comes to sexual performance, you know, uh, I mentioned a moment ago, gains wave, and, and I'll just dive deeply uh, into that treatment because a lot of guys are not familiar with it. Um, when we look at regenerative options for sexual function, gains wave is really at the forefront of that. And, and gains wave is um, the, the brand, if you will, for uh, the, the shockwave therapy to the penis. Okay. So the same technology that we use for breaking up kidney stones, where you can put a probe on the side of the, of the back and it delivers uh, shock waves, sound waves, if you will, into the kidneys to break up kidney stones can be used at a lower intensity on the penis. And we're not breaking up stones in the penis. Uh, we're actually stimulating repair. We're stimulating the stem cells in the penis, the progenitor cells to um, activate and they in turn will repair the surrounding tissue. They'll help stimulate a process called angiogenesis, which is creation of new blood vessels, new blood flow. It'll help improve the vascular supply of the penis to help uh, improve erections. And so Gaines Wave is a, a, a really nice regenerative option for boosting sexual function by fixing the underlying problem of poor blood flow. So those foundational aspects that, that we talked about, the nutrition and the sleep and the fitness and the detox and everything else, you know, the, the way I position it is, look, Joe, I can help fix your sexual function now, tonight, today, right here, right now with some Band-Aid approaches like the blue pill, the yellow pill, injections, vacuum pump, uh, stuff like that to give an erection today, right now. But long term, I'm going to fix it with these options like gains weight and PRP, which we'll talk about, and exosomes. But if you just do that, it's going to come right back again in a year from now. The problem is going to come right back unless you address it. And so that's where the foundational stuff. So you see what I'm saying? I, I, I position the foundational stuff, the, the MALE framework, more as, look, if you want to have a, a long-term sustained result, we need to... Uh, really change the underlying process. If you if you don't fix the leak in your roof, it's going to keep coming through. And so that's what's really about it. It, it. It's fixing the the underlying problem right now with with gains wave. But if I don't fix the other issues, it's going to come right back again. Yeah, and in the cognitive world, we talk about how many holes are there in your roof. And the answer so if you know if there's only one hole you can fill that in pretty good. Then maybe yeah. gains waves the answer. But what about the five other holes over here and the three over there? If you don't look at those, then as you say, you're gonna be right back. Out. That's right, that's so right. Yeah. This is the gains wave concept that you've just helped them understand. What, let's go into some of these others. What, PRP, platelet-rich plasma, I use it all the time. I'm an osteopathic yeah. physician, specialist in osteopathic manipulation and joint pain. So I use PRP with lax ligaments uh, tendinopathies, you know, chronic mm -hmm. tendon laxity and things like yeah. that. Yeah. How does it fit into the erectile dysfunction world? Yeah. PRP is, is, is wonderful in that, you know, number one for, for the listeners is not a drug. It's not a medication. It's simply your own blood products. And, uh, what we do with PRP, whether it's for, you know, hair loss, whether it's for skin rejuvenation, whether it's for joint healing, whether it's for sexual function, wherever you're injecting it, you're basically taking the, uh, the, the platelets and the growth factors and the cytokines that we know stimulate repair and regeneration of, of healthy tissue and concentrating it in the area where it's needed. And so the way I do PRP, which is probably very similar to the way you do it, Dr. Trish, is uh, draw the patient's blood in the office, uh, put that blood in a, center, in a high speed centrifuge, and when we spin it down, we're able to separate out the blood into the different uh, layers of blood products. And so at the bottom, the most dense layer, the very bottom of the, of the, of the tube, once you've spun it, is the red blood cells. And then above that, you have a buffy coat, it's called, which is like a, a thick white layer, which is full of the good, healthy growth factors, platelets, all the, the, the good products that you want. And then above that is the serum, the plasma, which is typically, sometimes people, some people call that PPP or platelet poor plasma. Um, but you want the platelet rich plasma, which is that buffy coat. And so I would draw that up and, uh, and then I would inject that directly into the erectile tissue of the penis. 
uh, to stimulate repair and recovery. And um, I do like to always, um, whenever I do that, whether I do that with gains wave or not, I, I, I definitely see better results when I combine the two modalities together is I have guys uh, use a, a, a vacuum pump, a, a, an erection pump on a daily basis to stimulate repair as well and recovery. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So these are interesting modalities, obviously, that are really, seems like they're helping people perform at high performance. So that's what that's they're right. after. So that's right. You know, what about these exosomes? You, you were listing off these different concepts. Why don't we just keep rolling? Yeah. Around? Sure. So you have uh, stem cells, which are the progenitor cells from which every other cell grows. So when we're babies, when we're in utero, the, um, the stem cells are what creates other cells, other tissue to grow. So stem cells are very attractive to use for any type of healing process because they will um, help provide really the, the foundation, the framework for normal, healthy growth. Exosomes, uh, the, the simplest way to think about exosomes are they are the secretions from stem cells. If you could get the contents of a stem cell, that is what exosomes really are. And so they are really um, at a very foundational level. They provide the stimulation, um, the signals that the body needs to create new healthy tissue. And how do you get the exosomes to increase? What, what is there a particular? So uh, yeah, exosomes are, are a product that you, that you actually buy. Okay. And you have them in, injected wherever you want to put them. Some people uh, take exosomes IV. Some people get exosomes in joints. Some people get exosomes in their hair. Um, but exosomes uh, can be used for sexual function. Now I'll clarify a couple of things here. Number one is um, you got to be sure you're getting a good quality product. So there are only two labs in the country that I would trust and I won't name any names here, but um, you have to be sure you're getting a good quality product that comes from a, a, a really what you want is a single stem cell line. You want to know that you're getting a good purified exosome product. And there's a lot of, it, it's a wild west. So you got to be really careful what you're getting. Number two, I want to be, I want to clarify that of everything I talked about today, this is the one part that is off label. So using exosomes or stem cells for sexual function is specifically off label. And so while I do that, sometimes my patients will always understand that that particular modality is off label for that use. And you mentioned peptide therapy. Is that yes. how is that similar? How is that different to the other ones you posted off? Yeah. So so peptides are are really incredible. Peptides are simply short proteins. Okay. So a protein is um, a long chain of amino acids, a hundred or more amino acids in length is the definition of a protein. A peptide is nothing more than a short chain of amino acids. Anything less than a hundred is called a quote peptide. A peptide is, is a, a signaling molecule, if you will, that is um, it's synthesized to mimic signaling molecules in your own body. So for example, insulin is a peptide. Mm -hmm. uh, growth hormone is technically, a, it's a peptide. Okay. It's a hormone. It's a, it's, it's a long chain, but it's it technically a peptide. And so there are peptides that we can uh, use for very precise, specific functions, such as um, reducing inflammation whether it's in the gut or whether it's in a joint or whether it's systemic inflammation, we can reduce it with certain peptides. There are peptides that help with musculoskeletal repair, especially after surgery, for example, or if you've, if you've injured your hip, your knee, your elbow, um, there are peptides for boosting immune function, peptides for sleep, for cognitive function and focus, for energy, for sexual function, for weight loss, for almost anything. These peptides are, um, are signaling molecules that your body has, um, um, recognition of because there are signals that your body is used to already. And, you know, basically over the years, your body has become depleted of these enzymes, peptides, if you will. And so that's what peptide therapy is. It's really repleting those signals that your body has lost to allow it to repair itself. So are these peptides taken, are they injected as the things you've mentioned before? Or are they taken orally? Yeah, well, some peptides. Yeah, sure. Some peptides are oral. So, like BPC, for example, is a peptide that's taken orally, and that's great for gut health. 
Some peptides are nasal spray, like C-Link is a nasal spray that's great for anxiety and for sleep. Um, Dihexa is a topical peptide that's great for uh, memory concentration, actually. Um, some peptides are injectable, like CJC, ipamorelin, or tesamorelin, are, are great growth hormone secretagogues, which means they stimulate your body's internal production of growth hormone. So you're not taking exogenous growth hormone, which could have some potential side effects. You're stimulating your body to produce its own growth hormone naturally. Um, and so it, it depends on, on which peptide you're using for what reason, and the, the route of administration can vary. So, you know, folks are, uh, this is all very interesting, of course, for everyone to be hearing and the idea. So how does it work when a, a gentleman comes in to, to see you? What does it look like? You know, what's that system or how does that approach, you know, what does yeah. it look like for them? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, when I start working with men, the, the, the first two questions that I ask are number one, where are you now? And number two, where do you want to be? And that's really the foundation uh, upon which everything else um, originates. So where are you now? That means how is your overall health right now? What issues are you having? Um, what challenges have you had in the past? Um, what's holding you back? Why are you here? What's your, you know, uh, what's your, your, your health issue that we need to overcome? And sometimes there are massive major issues they're having. Other times they just want to optimize. They just want to, you know, extend lifespan and, and, and live as long as they can. And then where they want to be, what are your goals? You know, what is your why? Why should I help you? Why should I work with you? What's the, what's the reason you're here with me now? What finally got you here now? What is it about now that's different than yesterday? So that helps me really understand what, what a man's trying to achieve. And, and, you know, I want to make sure I can help him. I want to make sure that, that, uh, I have the tools in my toolbox to solve his issues. And so normally almost always I can, because most of us, most men are, we're simple creatures in my mind. And, and, and we are all fairly similar in the challenges that, that men seem to have. So um, I, I work with high performing men every day, all day. So I, I, I very familiar with, with their issues. Well, that's great. And you know, do you just see men locally in Sarasota at Smart Men's Health, or do you see folks elsewhere? Or how? Does yeah, that work? no. So, so uh, actually, the, so the Gap Institute uh, for Elite Health and Performance is my local center. Um, I see uh, men here locally, but I also do telehealth visits nationally, and so I work with a lot of men around the country, uh, all via telehealth, and uh, I'm licensed in several states, and so I'm able to practice telehealth as well. So most of the stuff that I do can be done virtually. That's great. So if people want to learn more about Gaines Wave, particularly, or any of the other modalities you've mentioned, what, what would you suggest they do? Thank you. So uh, you can check out my website. It's uh, drtracygappin.com. And uh, there's more information on my site there. My center, the site for my center is gappininstitute.com, where you can see all the services offered if you're coming here locally. Um, and then I do have a, um, um, an offer for a download. If, um, if guys are, are interested, um, they can uh, text health, the word health to 26786, and they can get a, a, a free men's health guide, uh, top 10 strategies for optimizing health and performance, some of which we've talked about today. And they'll also get um, the first six chapters of my book, Mel 2.0 for free. And they'll also get the opportunity to book a discovery call with me if they're interested in working with me further. That's great. You know, in the functional medicine world, we know that it's enormous amounts of education to help people realize that there are other paths other than, like you say, the blue pill or the injections. So, guys, you really need to seek this out. He, Dr. Gappin is giving an enormous amount of list here of ways to, you know, get in touch with him, get his information. And, and learn more about the modalities he's alluding to today. So Dr. Gavin, thanks so much for being on the show. But the last question I always wanna ask everyone that comes on the show, to say, I'd love to hear these answers too, is what is your number one secret for living a healthy life? I love this question. The answer is sleep. The answer is unequivocally, wholeheartedly sleep. And, and the reason for that is, sleep is overlooked. You know, most of the men that I work with 
they're overperformers, they're overachievers, they are grinders, they think that uh, working harder is better. And, you know, when you exercise, when you train, you're not building muscle. I want to, you know, be really clear and, and point this, emphasize this point out here that when you exercise, you're tearing muscle down. And so, well, the obvious question is, well, when do I build muscle then? If I'm, if I'm working out, I'm tearing down muscle. When do I build muscle? When you sleep. And so sleep is when your body repairs itself. It's when recover, it recovers. It's when it builds muscle. It's when it builds um, healthy tissue. It's when your growth hormone levels surge. It's when your testosterone levels recover. It's when your body clears all the cellular debris and trash. It is such a vital part of our health. And yet guys take it for granted and they think that they can get away with four hours of sleep and nonsense. You think you are, but you're not your cortisol levels. The next day will, will rise to help you get through the day with, you know, some amount of energy, but you're affecting every other system in the body. Again, human systems, you know, everything intersects high cortisol equals low testosterone storing fat, et cetera. And so you got to get good sleep. And so, um, you know, some of the tips I give, go to bed the same exact time every night without question, set an alarm. If you have to go to bed the exact same time, phones off, iPads off, computers off four hours before bedtime. So no blue light. Um, if you're going to watch TV, even I recommend wearing uh, blue light blocking glasses. Um, any kind of uh, screen should be avoided though, if at all possible, uh, cold, dark room. Um, I, I recommend, um, keeping the electronics out of your bedroom, especially, you know, a lot of guys put their phone by the, on their nightstand next to them. Uh, the EMF your phone emits uh, can affect the quality of your sleep. Um, and so uh, keep all those electronics out of your room. And then finally, one last part of this is your morning routine has a dramatic effect on how you sleep. So studies show that sunlight exposure in the morning has a dramatic effect on melatonin production at night. And so in the morning, get outside, get some sunlight exposure on your body. It definitely helps later on. Awesome. And that's why up here in the mountains, we have a little trouble <laughs> with that sort of stuff because the sun's not up yet. That's but, right. Um, this has been awesome, Dr. Gappin. Thank you so much for being on the show. And guys, I really hope you've gotten some really good information on men's high performance health because this gentleman obviously knows what to tell you. So thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me today.